evening and a welcome to Staff Gymnasium on the campus of Brockton High School in the City of Champions for this BCA Sports presentation of Brockton Lady Boxers Basketball. My name is Peter Zimbor, joined alongside my broadcast partner for the evening, Nubi Rateau. Tonight, the 1-0 Brockton Lady Boxers welcome in the also 1-0 Barnstable Red Raiders. Nubi, through one game thus far this season that we've called of Brockton Lady Boxers Basketball, look fairly impressive. Peter, I'm very impressed with the Brockton Boxers. I mean, that it was only, you know, the first game, but um, a lot of exciting stuff I saw. I think they have a lot of offensive weapons. I think they do a fantastic job. Dominique, in particular, on the board, she did a fantastic job last game. She had 11 points, 12 rebounds. Today, she actually predicted, predicted 40 points and 20 rebounds, so we'll see if she's close to that. But um, I'm definitely impressed. The Brockton Boxers have a lot of offensive weapons. The starting five, they are capable, you know, of, of having a big day offensively. So. You know, it's, it's, it's about, you know, carrying momentum right now and, and finding identity, you know, finding yourself within the first few games. Starting five for the Barnstable Red Raiders, number three, Stephanie Martin, number 10, Molly Bent, number 12, Margaret Rice, number 21, Colleen Kenny, and at number 33, Megan Dombrowski. For the Brockton Lady Boxers, their starting five consists of number 22, Tatiana Diaz, number 23, Chantel Jordan, number 33, Christian McDuffie, number 11, Chanel Melton, who has the ball right now and is going to put that one in for two. You know, the confidence of the Brockton box, you can just tell, I mean, the first game, the, last year they were a very young basketball team. You know, I think they played tentative at times, but they're a lot more aggressive. Defensive ten tenacity is absolutely fantastic. Dominique Coley, number 21, rounds out the starting five for the Lady Boxers. 2 nothing to score Brockton on top. Seven minutes and 16 seconds left to go in the opening quarter. Barnstable tries to take it to the hole and does just that. Number 10, Amali Bent, time the game at two. Tatiana Diaz bringing the ball down the floor for Brockton. A newcomer to the Lady Boxers team will get an assist, or no, she will not. As she passed that over to number 21, Dominique Coley missed it down low. But Tatiana Diaz, the newcomer to the Lady Box, is very impressive in her first outing in a Lady Boxers uniform. Outstanding ball handling skills. Peter has the ability to get to the basket at will. Uh, definitely an exciting player to watch. Colleen Kenny off the boards for two for Barnstable, giving the Red Raiders their first lead of the game, four to two, with 6.40 left to go in the first quarter. Diaz with the ball for the Lady Boxes Inside the paint goes to lay it up draws a foul she'll be heading to the free throw line where she will be shooting two Diaz just has the ability great job penetrating to the basket and having the defense collapsing on her so defense has to make the decision whether to guard her or to um, you know help, help defense so definitely a dangerous player on the court uh, whether she's going to the basket or creating shots for her teammates foul committed by Megan Dombrowski for the Barnstable Red Raiders newbie. Let me ask if you have seen this. We've talked a little bit about some stories that have swept the country in relation to high school and college basketball in recent broadcasts as Diaz hits one free throw, making it a one-point deficit. 4-3, Barnstable leads 6-29 left to go in the opening quarter. We were talking in a prior broadcast as Barnstable's number 21, Colin Kenny, makes it a 6-3 game with 6-17 left to go in the quarter. We were talking in a prior broadcast about that 100-plus point performance at a college game elsewhere in the country as Christian McDuffie takes the hole and one. She'll be heading to the line. I got to tell you what, Peter. Christian McDuffie is, is, is one of the best players I've seen at, you know, creating the contact while still having the ability to make the shot. I mean, so many times, I mean, just counting in the foul, just, you know, physical play, going to basketball, controlling that physical play, using that to her advantage. McDuffie does not make a three-point play out of it. That was the second foul committed by Dombrowski for the Red Raiders. And that ball ultimately is going to trickle out of bounds. But what I'm getting at, newbie, have you seen this viral video that is sweeping YouTube of the world's worst free throw ever? No, I have not seen it. But I'd like to hear more about it, Peter. It's on YouTube. I've seen it on ESPN First Take. I had friends who I didn't even know were into basketball email me the video and say, hey, Pete, have you seen this? you got to watch for yourself. It's the world's worst free throw. I mean, what makes it the worst free throw? I mean, there's a lot of bad. Great. Uh, you know, I've got to tell you what. I'm really impressed by the Brockton boxers just swarming the glass and getting offensive boards. Sure, they don't make it once in a while, but the fact that they're just on the glass, that's just, they're just showing textbook fundamental uh, basketball play right Brockton there. Brockton up 7-6. Chanel Melton trying to up that lead. Stops in the paint and loses it. Brunson back with the ball. 
What makes the world's worst three free throw newbie is he's at the free throw line, shoots the ball up, and it makes it, 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 it arcs very high and comes down about half the distance between the free throw line and the actual hoop. Ouch. Brockton ups their lead to nine to six, five. 13 left to go. It almost reminded me of the effect that the Harlem Globetrotters used to have on the Washington Generals when they would grease the ball, use the grease the ball trick during the game. Turnover right here by Barnstable. Whatever happened to the Harlem Globetrotters? I mean, they used to be really a... Harlem Globetrotters still tour. They still tour. Well, I, I mean, I really haven't heard much about them. Their, their buzz seems to seems to be completely gone. I think since ABC stopped doing Wide World of Sports on Saturday afternoons, the Harlem Globetrotters' significance has dwindled the town. I saw them at the Boston Garden years ago, and I enjoyed it. And number 10 for Barnstable, she went down, kind of leaning on her right leg, and she's wearing a knee brace on that right knee, that being number 10, Molly Bent. McDuffie inside. McDuffie creating contact, controlling herself still, getting the basket. Outstanding. Outstanding. You make me want to show. You ever heard that song, Peter? Uh, I have not. <laughs> well, it's a good song. Perhaps I'll YouTube that while you YouTube the world's worst free throw. Yes, yes, Timeout yes. called by Barnes. About four minutes and 23 seconds remaining in the opening quarter. Brockton with an 11 and six lead over the Barnstable Red Raiders. Once again, you're watching BCA Sports. Peter Zimbor in Nubi Rateau. Courtside calling all of the action. Second broadcast of Lady Boxes basketball thus far this season. And thus far, head coach April Dingwell and company have had plenty to cheer about as they have gone 1-0. and And earlier today, her assistant coaches David Ray and Stephanie Savas had plenty to be happy about as the JV team and the freshman teams, respectively, for the Lady Boxers were dominant in their victories over yeah, those dominant. versions of the Barnstable Red Raiders, dominant respectively. Dominant to say the least, Peter. I mean, that freshman game was, uh, I think it was a 50-point win. It was, uh, ouch. There was a girls' basketball game held in Indiana last week. Final score, newbie, 102 to two. I tell you what, Peter. Um, you know, if I'm playing sports and someone's, you know, winning 102 to two, and, and they're not getting fouled every time they're going to the basket, then there's something wrong with that coach. The two <laughs> I, baskets. I'll tell you what. I, I don't. I don't know much about basketball. I'll tell you this right now. If a team scores, I have two points, and team's on the brink of 100, they're not getting 100. They're just not. The two points that were scored by the team who got two points were both off free throw shots as well. No field goals. Nice defense exhibited by Brockton. Again, Aliyah Brito with the ball gets it over to Christian McDuffie. McDuffie's short jumper does not connect. Rebounded by number 41 for the Barnstable Red Raiders, Haley Johnson, the senior. Johnson inside to Dombrowski. No good rebounded by Brito for Brockton. Gets it over to Tatiana Diaz. Diaz tries to lay it up. Is fouled. She'll be heading to the free throw line for the second time tonight. Yeah, awkward angle right there by Diaz. I'd like to go to the basket um, a little closer. I mean, she kind of just threw it up there. She actually got bailed out with the foul. But um, not the greatest shot of all time right there. I'd probably angle myself better there for a higher percentage shot by Diaz. You gotta stop the ball if you're Bonsmore right now. You can't just, you know, they're playing tentative, waiting, you know, for the pass, but 
you gotta stop the ball. You know, Tatiana's going right to the basket. Gotta stop the ball. Sharon Springsteen in the game for Brockton to Tatiana Diaz at the top of the key. Sinks the three. Brockton's a 10-point lead, 16 to 6. 304 left to go in the opening quarter. I'll tell you right now, Tatiana Diaz, her former team, the Southeastern Regional Hawks, missing her as they lost their season opener just the other night. Christian McDuffie with the rebound for Brockton gets it over to Tatiana Diaz. right there. We know I really like what uh, Coach April Dingwell did with, with this basketball team last year. If you remember, there was actually a, a lot of you know underclassmen, even some freshmen on the varsity team. But she said, you know, maybe we're going to take a step back this season. But it's going to be it's going to be good for us that you know we're going to have a young team and, and we're going to have a team that's going to be developed for the next two three years and create a nice little core. And, 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 we're, and we're seeing the fruits of that today. Great hustle, newbie credit, newbie credit. For the love of God, newbie credit. Coach for Barnstable calling for a travel. And good explanation by the referee right there to the coach. That's what I like to see. You know, a lot of times, you know, a coach may not like a call and referees just ignore you. You know, it, I think coaches respect more when you explain your call. They may not agree with it, but you explain the call, explain why you did it, and, you know, they're, they're more apt to, to, to take well to it. That's it, that's it. See so many times, so many referees just completely ignore, you know, any type of complaints, but they may have a valid point. Sixteen seven Brockton on top, Buck forty left in the first quarter. McDuffie with the ball gets called for traveling, turns the ball over to the Red Raiders. Fox has got to finish strong right now. You want to finish strong in the quarter. In the boxer season debut, it actually took them a little while to get going. Much quicker start for the Lady Boxers tonight against the Red Raiders. Sharon Springsteed with the takeaway. Steps out of bounds, bounce to the ball. Peter should start last game. I just got ran over by I just got ran over by a player as they barge right into this table. I have to get trained Jerry immediately. It was incredible. This during the boys' game Friday night? Yes, during the boys' game. This charge right at me. You know, the whole mixer and table was, was jarred and everything. Freaked me out. Thankfully, I was okay. You know, what would we do without you? you know, it's funny. Um, I've, I've avoided the to do sideline camera during the whole football season to avoid collisions like that. Chantel Jordan makes it 18-7 for Brockton. Not everyone at BCA has been so lucky doing sideline camera for football in the past. Steve Roy been nailed multiple times. Our general manager, Mark Lindy. Was Mark Lindy got nailed in the Super Bowl game at Gillette Stadium. Aliyah Brito with the hustle. Great hustle right there. Outstanding. Go, April Dingle likes plays like that. Blocking foul right there. Come on, Molly Kate. 41! 41! 
Less than 30 seconds to go in the opening quarter. First quarter so far. A lot of calls. Come on, set the second straight. Oh, we you gotta go down after. Winding down here in the first quarter. Buzzer sounds. Brockton finishes with an 11 point lead. 18 to seven through one quarter of play. Good opening frame for the Lady Boxers. Definitely uh, Brockton Boxers came out on fire offensively. Little low uh, towards the end of the quarter. Uh, I'd say good job by Barnesville, you know, weathering that storm. It could have been a lot more than a, than a nine point lead that we have on right now, excuse me, 11 point lead. But um, Brock the Boxer, really impressed with the way they crash in the boards, Peter. I'm really fundamental stuff. I mean, as you know, in the fundamental rule book, um, rule number five, section two, ordinance 1.5, um, it's crash the boards. It's crash the boards. Brock the Boxer definitely following that ordinance to a science. Newby, while well, we've got the opportunity between quarters, I would like to take it upon myself and the entire BCA sports staff and all of our viewers to wish you a happy birthday. Oh, thank you, Peter. I didn't even, I didn't, I didn't even know it was my birthday yesterday. Wow, could knock me over with the feather. Sounds like I partied all night. <laughs> but thank you, Peter. Thank you. Just uh, did you enjoy your birthday festivities? Oh man, I enjoyed my birthday. And, and I'm, I'm honestly, I'm not a big birthday guy. I don't want to get all sentimental here, but I think uh, you are. I think I'm you're a much bigger I, birthday guy than you're letting no, us know. No, I've always said, you know, my birthday is every day. I'm surrounded by great people, great family and friends. So. Um, you know what's what's in a birthday, but uh, you, know, I, you know a lot of people that made it special yesterday. So uh, I had a good time. I had a, I had, a, I had a real good time to say the least. McDuffie short jumper, no good. Rebounded by the Lady Boxers, no good as well. Barnstable comes down with it, and they tussle for the ball. Jump ball is called. Barnstable basketball. Dominique Coley comes to the game again. She talked to me before the game, and she told me 40-20 today, newbie, 40-20. Barnstable cuts the deficit in half, 18 to nine. 7.22 left to go in the opening half. Coley almost came down with the rebound. Barnstable ends up with it. But intercepted just as quickly by Chanel Melton for the Lady Boxers. Diaz for three. No good. McDuffie with the rebound. No good. Coley with the rebound. Off the glass and in. Coley 269 just has, Brockton. She just has outstanding hands. Great footwork in the paint. Yeah, sort of wide right there. Good thinking by Melton. Just uh, need to be a little more accurate, but uh, good thinking right there. Brockton Box is just all over the floor right now, hustling. You know, Chanel Melton has been very impressive defensively thus far tonight, Newbie. Long arms, Peter. Long arms. 
Mix that some offense as well. 22-9, Brock with the lead, six minutes to go in the half. Chanel Wilson is just a constant leader on this team. Very consistent, cool, calm, collected. Right there, Cole is wide open. They gotta look up. Timeout called by the Bonsville Red Raiders head coach George Bent. Yeah, he's pretty, um, pretty upset about that. I was trying to use his, his name as you know he's pretty mad and bent and then I couldn't think of an analogy but he's pretty angry right now um, in terms of I, I just think the Brock the Boxer they're not necessarily playing and better basketball per se Peter but what are they doing they're hustling and, and, and that probably gets the you know coach more, more upset than anything is, is he's not seeing the hustle by their team speaking of hustling I gotta tell you what the Lakers are not hustling ouch you want to talk about an out you know an awful start to a season with all that talent Dwight Howard, and, uh, and, and Dami just gives you a look like, you know, 40-20, it's coming. But um, but but Peter, I mean, I don't want to switch subjects here, but we're talking about hustling. The, 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 the Los Angeles Lakers, wow, what a what an abysmal season so far. Watched a little bit of their game against Oklahoma City on Friday night. Uh, I was listening to the Kobe Bryant interview. Kobe says he's working on his inner zen. And working on staying calm. I mean, Peter, I mean, can you count how many times the Brock the Box have dove into the ground fighting for loose balls? I mean, this is really what you'd like to see for April Dingwa. to, you know, Barnesville because, you know, it seems like Brockton should be pulling away, but, I mean, they make these two free throws now down to a single-digit lead. 24-13 Brockton on top, 4.35 to go. Foul called against Aliyah Brito for Brockton at the free throw line, missing her first of two is Colleen Kenny for the Barnesville Red Raiders. No relation, to my knowledge, to former Brockton Athletic Director Tom Kenny, who is here in attendance. He's a guy that for someone who retired, you see quite a lot of. Exactly. Tom Kenny, um, actually talking to um, That's it, Mo. Up wide, up wide. Talking to great football player Sam Basong right now. And I'm going to make a public call right now. Get Sam Basong in the Brockton Football Hall of Fame. He belongs there. Both Tom Kenny and Sam Basong, both good dudes. Interestingly, Anthony Comer, who may have been either the best or second best running back in Brockton High School football history behind Peter Harris if he's second. He just got into the Brockton High Hall of Fame this past year after graduating 20 years ago. So Sam Basong graduated about eight years ago. He might have to wait another 12 years. Yeah, well, he shouldn't have to wait another 12 years. Eight years is long enough. Isn't the, typically the rule in like professional sports five years? Five or years, yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
You know, speaking of Hall of Fames, do you know what Hall of Fame I think has the worst criteria for inducting people? Out of professional sports? Yes. I'd say baseball. I'm going to say professional basketball. There is NBA players who you might think should be in the Hall of Fame who are not in. But then every year, you get like some female MVP player from the pro league in the Ukraine that goes in. And just all these weird people you've never heard of from Eastern Europe and stuff every year. And you think to yourself, could they have played up to the standards that BC level players in America did? You know, I, I think what happens in a lot of these halls, I don't think it's just basketball where, you know, it's players that, you know, have played maybe in the 50s or 60s. And, you know, they want to give that era or, you know, that group of players they adjust to. So, they you know, they put someone in the Hall of Fame. Because they didn't have that, you know, um, back in those days. Or at least the attention that, that they probably should have deserved. So, it's almost like a, you know, almost like a payback. Like, you know, for all the work that you've done. Not necessarily that you're a good player, but just to a respect to the era. Because how many players from the 50s are in the NBA Hall of Fame, really? Or basketball Hall of Fame, I should say. It's not too many. I have not been to the Basketball Hall of Fame since they redid it a number of years ago in Springfield. See, I went last year, which is, um, I had a pretty good time over there. It looks very nice. Nice shot right there for the baseline. Come on, Red! Come on, Red! Good job, you know, they're, they're making a run right now, you know, they're up by, uh, Broxes were up by at least, by uh, as much as 14 at one point, now they're up by 9, and you know, a few more shots will be going to halftime, Peter, 2.55 left, and the first half might have something cooking. Well, it's up to Bronson to try to make this game competitive heading into halftime, Rito tries the rebound for Brockton, ultimately, oh, there's going to be a big scramble for the ball, another jump ball. Sharon Springseed for three. No good. Barnstable all alone is Haley Johnson. She'll lay that in. And just like that, we got a five point game, newbie. Time off and April, April Dingwell is going to call a timeout for Brockton with 2.03 left to go in the half. Brockton's lead has dwindled to just five, 25 to 20. You know, Brockton box right now, you know, it's just turnovers, Peter. I mean, turnovers and then. And, and, and the Red Raiders um, capitalize on those turnovers. The Brock is playing a little sloppy bounce right now. Give credit to, to Barnesville, you know, hustling a little more and, and, and limiting the Brock to boxes to one shot. But if I'm Brock right now, I'd go to the basket, attack the hoop, um, and try to get some momentum from the free throw line. But this is basically one shot and done for the Brock to box, the last offensive possessions. But two minutes left right here. Good time for the Brockton Boxers to try to make a run going to halftime and, and really up the seat back up to double digits. Oh, 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 
They're going to call that foul. That's a touch foul. Come on. And that's going to be on Haley Johnson for the Red Raiders. I feel like doing my Chris Berman impression every time I say Raiders and say Raiders. The Oakland Raiders. That was good, Peter. That was cute. That was very nice. Was very good. Former Oakland Raiders owner, Al Davis, born in Brockton. Yes. Yes, he is. Passed away you know, read, earlier this year. I really don't like the way the referees are calling this game, Peter. It's just, I don't think it's allowing either team to have any type of rhythm. I mean, that was a touch foul right there. You don't need to call a foul like that on the Red Raiders. I mean, if you want, you can call a foul on every play. <laughs> and, and, and that's what it looks like they're doing. McDuffie rolls one in, 27-20. Brockton on top, a buck 45 to go in the half. with multiple second chance opportunities ultimately calling Kenny puts it in back to a five point deficit for the Red Raiders 27-22 Brockton on top a buck ten left to go in the half Brockton trying to take it to the hole that is number 23 for Brockton who's fouled Chantel Jordan oh no she gets called for the charge turns the ball over to Barnstable Tell you what, Pete, this coach is trying to get on my nerves. He's really yelling in my ear right now. So he's trying to frost my cookies. He's move away about a few feet over here. Traveling called on McDuffie for Brockton as she rolls on the floor with the ball. Box, 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 regular box. Backcourt violation called against Barnstable. Brockton ball, 17.2 seconds left to go in the half. 27-23, Brockton with the lead. Push, push. Oh, 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 oh. 
down low. That is Chanel Melton for Brockton. Final seconds of the first half ticking away. And what was, what once was a double digit lead for Brockton has trickled down to just a six point edge for the boxers. 29 to 23 at halftime. And Nubi, your thoughts on the first half of play? Number one, um, Brockton Boxing in the second quarter, they're not getting second chance opportunities. Number two, too, ne too many turnovers. Number three, I'm really not a big fan of the officiating in this first half. I mean, you gotta, I'm, I'm both sides. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of things I would let go because they're destroying the rhythm of the game. Rhythm games, both teams are not establishing any type of rhythm. Um, so the, those three things right there, I look, I look to hopefully change in the second half. Score: Brockton 29, Barnstable 23. It's halftime. You're watching BCA Sports. We'll step aside for a quick breather. Back with second half action after this. <laughs> And we return for second half action here at Staff Gymnasium in Brockton, Massachusetts, where currently the Brockton Lady Boxers have a 29-23 lead over the Barnstable Red Raiders. Peter Zimbor and Newby with toe courtside calling the action. Quick start for Brockton in this game, settled into a competitive game. Brockton with the first bucket of the second half, however, as Dominique Coley down low makes it 31-23, 7-34 left to go in the third quarter. Dominique Coley with prognostications of grandeur this season thus far, Nubi, from your discussions with her. Yeah, she tells me, you know, pulls me say, hey, Nubi, says 30-20. Now she's saying 40-20. During halftime, she told me she's going for 50 next game, so we'll see. We'll see. right there. That was just a wild sequence of events. Yeah. 31-23 score remains the same. Brockton on top. 6-17 left to go in the third quarter. Barnstable inbounding the basketball. That's a charge right there, it looks like. No blocking foul. You know, everyone's asking me why am I dressed up here today, right now, doing this game. We're in a somewhat of a suit, I guess. After this game, we're actually immediately driving to Boston for a premiere. And a lounge for the news documentary Step Up. Coming soon to Punch TV. Coming soon to Punch TV. Um, the rumor around town is it's going to premiere Christmas Eve. The story is developing hot. Dot, dot, dot. And if you do not get Punch TV in your area, which I don't believe we do yet here in Boston, you can find the stream available for free online at Punch TV's website. So punch that into Google, no pun intended, and I'm sure you'll come up with it. 
four point edge Brockton, 31 27, 550 going the third. Tatiana Diaz taken to the hole, lays it up and in coast to coast. Tatiana Diaz. Right down the lane, no interior defense on, right there. Out. Gotta help defense. ball right there and uh, she takes a spill. Yeah, a little physical here. Peter, tell me from on, do you feel like this game's really gained momentum with all these calls? I feel like uh, I'm not a big fan of referees call these whistles and both teams can't get any type of offensive rhythm. Nice D, nice D. Perhaps the rhythm, not necessarily the outcome though. We have a youngster who just ran across the court. Nice and that almost caused a delay in the inbounding of the game. That was you at one point, newbie, wasn't it? No, I was never doing it like that. I knew better. Defense, defense. Come on, get the ball, guys. That's awesome. That's awesome. You know, I've always wanted to do get that, though. Ball. As an adult. A little, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> just run on the court or run on the baseball field or football field. I've always, that, I mean, I don't blame people for doing that. It didn't seem like so much fun. Nice Molly Tilton checks into the game for Megan Dombrowski for Barnstable. What about those guys that run across the baseball diamonds and try to get by without security catching them as Aaliyah Brito hits one down low for Brock? I've always wanted to be, I would honestly, if I, if I had the money and I was rich to build myself out, I would definitely do that. Would you do that, Peter? No. It seems, it seems like so much fun. Come on, come on. Peter, I have a lot of stuff I want to do when I'm rich. <laughs> <laughs> have we discussed the table flipping? Yeah, on we, discussed, before? we discussed table flipping. Table flipping, disturbing security at sporting events. Lots of things. Tatiana Diaz overthrows her intended target in Chanel Melt and out of bounds 35-27. Brockton on top, 4-27 and going to third. What would David Ray is thinking right now upon hearing these thoughts from you, Mr. Rateau? Oh, Mr. Ray knows all about me. David Ray, you know, assistant he, coach for Brockton, Lady Boxers basketball. He knows how crazy I am. Tatiana Diaz with the steal, lays it in. Brockton back to a double digit lead with 3.35 to go in the third. Boxers have a chance to make a run right now in the last three minutes going to the last quarter. Chanel Melton once again, very impressively defensively tonight. To Diaz, over to number 23, Chantal Jordan. Brockton has a 12 point edge, 41 29, 320 to go in the third quarter. And Brockton has come out for the second half, hot newbie. Definitely brought the boxers, you know, come out the sense of urgency here in the, in the, in the third quarter. Um, taking advantage of, um, of these turnovers, you know, doing a fantastic job looking up court, 
finding the open man up court and, 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 and getting open re, uh, easy layups to the basket. Box doing definitely doing a better job on the boards too, allowing Barnes to just one and done, um, not getting second chance opportunities like they did in the first quarter. So 3:20 left. Peter Box is up by 12. Definitely a chance for the boxes to really open up this lead and, and make it very comfortable in the fourth quarter. to McLean for two. Melton, sister of Jimmy Melton, former basketball player for the boxes. And his birthday is next Wednesday, so happy birthday, Jimmy. Good job, kid. Good job, kid. Week after your birthday. Week after my birthday. Sagittarius. 24, 25 now, newbie? I don't want to talk about my age on air. I'm 24. You're old, newbie. Yeah, I'm old. I'm getting old, man. I was doing this since I was 13. Remember that? Uh, yes. My little voice. No bass in my voice whatsoever. I crack and all this other type of stuff. Rock the boxes! Sound like that. Unbelievable. You've literally been working here since you were 13? I think my first game announcing here when I was 13, freshman year. Wow. Yeah. So how many years have I known you? I don't know, Peter. I'm I mean, terrible at math. 13, I'm 24, 11, 11 years. 11 years, wow. Yeah, wow. A bit of an emotional moment right here. <laughs> <laughs> You've been doing this since you're about like five, right? <laughs> not that, not, not going back that far. 43-29 Brockton on top, and Missed the layup by the Red Raiders. Jump ball down low. Actually, they're going to call a foul. That's going to be against Brockton's Tatiana Diaz for a hold. That's a big three right there, Peter. And they gave those three points to the boxers. The score is wrong. Should be 32-43 boxes, rather 46-29. They gotta change that, and they are. Hey, you gave it to the wrong team, I think. And I was correct on that. Diaz with the ball for Brockton, 2-10 left to go in the third. Yeah, and he that has, ball yeah. is gonna trickle out of bounds. Yeah, too cute on that. Just dribble the basketball, go to the go to the hoop. You know, no need for you know for all the jambalaya. Here we go, here we go, Red. Get a stop, get a stop. No reach. Pop, pop, pop. Gernasia Silva Moore for Brockton. She gets called for the charge. Good job, kid. Good job, good job. 
Game getting a little more physical as the uh, clock winding down to the end of the third quarter. Stephanie Martin will be at the free throw line for the Barnstable Red Raiders. You've got quite the conundrum here, newbie. You have to be in Jamaica playing for a premiere of your own movie at 9 p.m. and it's currently 8.06 as I say this. Yes. How long does it take to get the Jamaica plane? If I gotta be there at 9 p.m., I'll make it happen. Let's just say that. <laughs> I'll make it happen. Sharon Springsteed. Ball working its way around the various members of the Lady Boxers team. McDuffie with the ball to Diaz. Tries to get it to Aliyah Brito over her head out of bounds. 43-34 Brockton on top, however, nine point edge for the Lady Boxers. Reminds me, um, today actually reminds me when, I was, when we were covering a football game over in Pinkerton. I had to make it back in Brockton at a certain amount of time, and then I <laughs> got pulled over by our police officer. I was thinking about that as well. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll be there in time. <laughs> ah, not quite. <laughs> whoop, whoop. <laughs> go, go, go. Go, go, go. One of the best moments in the history of interaction between pulled over citizen and policemen. You have the option to pay the fine or either challenge it. Your response? Well, it depends on how much the ticket's for. <laughs> oh, wow. Stephanie Martin for Barnstable makes it 43-36, Brockton. Less than 10 seconds to go in the third quarter. And the third quarter comes to an end. Brockton with a nine point lead. 45 to 36 is your score. Lady Boxers on top. They did get back into double digits with their lead in the third quarter, newbie. However, single digits is their lead at the conclusion of the third, 45-36 Brockton. Just when you think, you know, Brockton's gonna pull away, Barnes will make some run. You know, give credit to, to you know, good coaching right there, keeping the Red Raiders, you know, keeping their heads up and, and keeping them focused. Um, you know, the only down are single digits, so, you know, keep, you know, let them dog hang around for a while. And we'll get a little more confidence going to the fourth quarter, so. Uh, it's, not, it's time for the Brockton box at the first initial two, three minutes. I want them to make a real strong push, really open up a seat to about, you know, four, 14, you know, 16 points or so, and really make a push and put this team away. Let's go. 
eight minutes of basketball left to be played as we enter the home stretch of this game between the Brockton Lady Boxers and the Barnstable Red Raiders. Both teams entering this game at 1-0. Brockton currently with a nine-point lead, 45-36. to Tatiana Diaz with the ball. Nice pull-up jumper right there. Good job going to the basket, being strong. Brockton's lead cut to seven. Here we go, here we go, Rick. And Aliyah Brito called for a pushing foul down low. Apparently. Yeah, I did not see it. Again, my sorry. eyes were focused on the ball, which was in the hands of Tatiana Diaz at the time. At first, I thought oh, they were come calling. on! That's a, that's, a, that's a crock of garbage. It really is. He, she put her hands up, and the player ran right through her, and they're going to call a foul. These are really some inexperienced referees. I'm, I'm telling you, not a big fan of it. Both sides, they've been horrible. Awful. Unbelievable. And what do you do, Pete, if your hands are up and the player runs right into you? Well, Molly Bent's now at the line as a result of that call. Hits her first of two. Looking to make this a five-point deficit, and she does just that. 45-40, Brockton on top, 7-17 seven, to go. Tatiana Diaz with the ball. Tries to pass it over to Christian McDuffie out of bounds. So it'll be a bounceable possession as they try to make this either a one or two possession game. Good catch by camera guy Aaron Tebow. Outstanding catch. Newbie credit right there by a camera guy catching that basketball. Traveling violation. Defense, defense. Come on, guys, come on. Go, Rick. Let's go, Rick. Six minutes, 27 seconds to go in the game. Brockton up 45-40. Barnstable with the ball. Take away by Tatiana Diaz for Brockton. To McDuffie, to Jordan, to Melton. Short jumper connects. Brockton up by seven, 47-40. Great execution right there by the Brockton boxers. That's how you run a fast big offense. Chantel Jordan with the ball for Brockton, lays it up. No good, rebounded by McDuffie, up and in. 49-40, Brockton with the lead. These are the boxes I remember in the first quarter, crashing those boards. Christian McDuffie. Stephanie Martin able to recoup the basketball for Barnesville. Puts it in for two. 49-42. Brockton. 5-15 left to go in the game. And a timeout is called by head coach April Dingwell on the Brockton bench. 5-16 officially left to go. 49-42. Brockton is on top. Brockton box is fantastic on those last two possessions on the fast break right there. Um, spreading out the floor, Chanel Milton, nice baseline jump shot right there. Uh, 
No, but give credit to Barnstable, man. I'm, I think I've really, um, you know, I haven't given enough credit for fighting back and really you know, playing tough basketball. So our chances want to wish, um, I know we have a big Jewish population in Brockton, happy Hanukkah, as the first day was Saturday. As our, uh, one of our crew members, Matt Nelson is Jewish, and general manager Mark Lindy, so happy Hanukkah to both of you guys, and Ben, and ben Lindy, matter of fact. Half of this crew is Jewish. <laughs> One of my favorite events to cover all year will be coming up soon with the holiday season upon us. Well, the Rotary Club Holiday Invitational Tournament taking place between Christmas and New Year's Eve. Two days of just quality basketball here at Staff Gymnasium. Got be strong, little Monday. Definitely, you know, I'll see any tournament. Um, not sure what teams are participating in this year. I'll check that out. But last year, typically, normally Brighton usually um, participates in. Uh, Brighton, Severian. One year they had a team from Canada, the Markham Marauders, I remember. I remember East Boston was here. One of my favorite coaches, Malcolm Smith, who actually is not coaching East Boston anymore, and very sad to say. Uh, I think he moved on to a college, if I'm not mistaken. I want to say UMass for some reason. That rings a bell. He's moving on up in the world. Coach Malcolm Smith actually played a. Pretty um, you know, a small but funny role in the Madison vs. Madison documentary, which is actually um, out right now. Um, and the reason why I mention this documentary is because half of this scene, half of the scene of that documentary, was from here, Brockton High School, um, Madison Park High School. Coach Dennis Wilson and company had a fantastic film that was produced in 2007, actually five years ago. Um, that was just this year bought by ESPN Classic and the last scene of that game Brockton High was the neutral site so the last scene Brockton High was on ESPN and um, all the pitch, all the pitch. so definitely um, you know, an exciting time for, for, for Brockton people just being able to see that where to go Megan Wait a minute, wait a minute. Diaz for three, no good. Rebounded by McDuffie, no good. Dombrowski had the rebound for Bronson, but they say she stepped out of bounds. It'll be Brockton ball. And with 4.51 to go, Brockton up 49-42. Nibuto. Definitely um, Brockton boxes, Peter. I mean, uh, got to keep fighting right now, but give credit, to, um, give credit to the Red Raiders, you know, just keep pulling away. So Christian McDuffie at the free throw line. All right, come on, right. Box it out here. Gets brought into 50 points and an eight-point lead with 4.41 to go.
less than four minutes to go in this game. Tatiana Diaz with the ball. Gets it over to Silva Moore for three. No good. Rebounded by Bonstable. Whistle. And that is going to be called on Gionatia Silva Moore for Brockton. situation for Barnstable. It's calling Tenney at the line. It's a first. She'll get another opportunity looking to cut the deficit to six with 3.51 to go in the game. Also blown down low. I'll tell you right now, a lot of emotion in the stands here at Staff Gymnasium. The Brockton crowd has been into this game throughout the duration of this contest. However, the members of the Barnstable Red Raiders fan base, which seemingly mostly consists of members of the JV and freshman teams that played earlier today and frankly got trounced by the Lady Boxers, they are cheering in support of their varsity teammates because they sense that Though Barnstable has trailed most of this game, 3.39 to go in the game, they're only down by six. It's not out of the question that they could win. Diaz with the ball for Brockton. Over to Chantel Jordan, back to Diaz, to Chanel Melton. Chantel Jordan able to get herself out of trouble. Seven seconds left in the shot clock, gets it to Diaz. Five seconds left in the shot clock, does she know it? Tosses it up with two seconds to go and connects. 52-44, Brockton up by eight, 306 remaining in this game. called against Brockton, resulting in more free throw opportunities for Barnstable. This one called against Christian McDuffie, a third personal foul of the game, and this sends once again Colleen Kenny to the free throw line. She'll be shooting two for the Red Raiders. First, no good. called against Brock, and this one against Dominique Coley. And we got a six-point game once again, 52-46 Brockton on top, 2.27 to go. Melton. 
Washington. Down low, off the glass, and in. 54-46, Brockton leads less than two minutes to go. Bunce will trying to come up with some points quick. Timeout called by the head coach for the Barnstable Red Raiders, George Bent. So with 1.50 left to go in the game, Brockton leads 54-46. to You're watching BCA Sports. And Brockton came out of the gate fast in the first quarter of this game. Had a double-digit lead. That lead dwindled to be very competitive around halftime. Brockton once again came out of the gate strong in the early portion of the second half. And though they're still in command with an eight-point edge, 54-46, Clear as day, Barnstable is not out of this game. And they don't think they're out of it either. inbound on the ball deflected out of bounds by Brockton so they will inbound once again three pointer by Barnstable's Molly Bent 54 to 49 five point game again Chantel Jordan with the ball for Brockton And timeout called by the Brockton bench head coach April Dingwell calls that timeout for the Lady Boxers. Brockton leads by 554 to 49. One minute and 27 seconds left to go in this game. Both teams entering tonight's game with a record of one win, zero losses. Both teams not wanting to leave with anything but an O in the loss column. Brockton inbounds the ball. Christian McDuffie with the ball gets it over to Tatiana Diaz. 60 seconds on the clock. Aliyah Brito with the ball over to Chantel Jordan, to Chanel Melton, to Tatiana Diaz. Nice steal by Barnstable. Ends up back in the hands of Tatiana Diaz for Brockton. Over to Christian McDuffie. Back to Diaz over to Melton. 40 seconds on the clock. Brockton just trying to kill time. 35 seconds in the game clock. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Brockton moving the ball very efficiently. 
and we're going to have a blocking call go against Molly Bent for Barnstable. And with 27.1 seconds left to go in the game, Barnstable head coach George Bent calls a timeout with his team trailing by five. And as his team makes their way off the floor to the bench to talk things over with him, I overhear him saying, you never know, you never know. So he does not feel that his team is out of this one despite being down by five with 27.1 seconds to go. Not impossible that they come back and either tie or win this game. Seemingly unlikely, but certainly not insurmountable. Seventeen seconds to go, and Tatiana Diaz for Brockton will be fouled. And she'll be heading to the free throw line. Watch out, watch out! And with 14.7 seconds to go and Brockton leading by seven, we'll have a one-on-one -on -one free throw situation for Megan Dombrowski for Barnstable. Less than six seconds to go on the clock. Ball stays in bounds. Buzzer sounds, game is over. Brockton improves to 2-0 as they defeat 
the Bunceville Red Raiders by a score of 56 to 49. Brockton came out strong in the first half, let it get competitive towards halftime, came out strong in the early goings of the second half. It got competitive in the fourth quarter. However, Brockton maintained their lead. Your final score, Brockton 56, Barnstable 49. For everyone here at BCA Sports, my broadcast partner, Nubi Rateau, I'm Peter Zimbor. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.